Good morning. It is time for Cup of Hope, and I'm Stephanie Winslow, and I'm so glad to be with you this morning as we are getting close to the end of 2020 and uh, <laughs> joyfully and full of hope, at least for me, this is where I'm coming from, that 2021 will be a year of great um, opportunity and transformation for us, for um, our lives as we press in and seek after God. We're going to start 2021 with a new hope, a, a lasting hope, uh, our hope and our eyes, our affection, our attention focused on the life and um, power of Jesus Christ. So we're going to end the, this year talking about a promise, a promise being fulfilled. We've been walking the last couple of weeks with Abraham and Sarah as they are um, received a promise from the word of God, from the mouth of God as he spoke to them, as he encountered them. Yesterday, he even made himself visible to them. He showed up at their tent. And um, so this, what we're going to walk through today is even a little bit deeper into that story. And um, just, I'm going to ask you and pose this question to you um, before we before we read. But before we do that, I just wanted to make one statement to you about um, yesterday. I I put out a blog, and um, the blog was is talking about are you good at wearing a mask? And uh, you can pick that blog up because uh, God is teaching me a lot through the season of COVID, as I'm sure he is teaching you things. But there's just something about um, wearing the mask. And one of the things that, that he has shown me and spoken to me is that wearing a mask, this mask where I feel suffocated, it's not strong enough to suffocate the move of God. So even when I feel like I'm being stifled and even when I feel like I can't breathe freely and even if I'm feeling like there's so many, so many restrictions and being held back, he keeps reminding me that there is nothing that will stop the move of God. As long as I keep pursuing after him, he's going to keep showing up and keep um, revealing himself to me and keep marching us forward as his people. We just can't take our eyes off of him and and we can't take our hope off of him. And so if you missed that blog, I, I put it out on Facebook and Instagram. It's on my website, um, stephaniewinslow.com. So if you missed the blog from yesterday, I would encourage you, especially if you're struggling with the whole wearing a mask thing or even just you you feel like you, you can't breathe freely um, because of the, the quarantine and the isolation and maybe where you're living there's you're on lockdown basically um i know there's many people especially in california that are just really struggling with that so if if that's you would you uh take a moment to go and read my blog from yesterday um it's called are you good at wearing a mask and uh, i challenge you to to read that and stephaniewinslow.com you can find it there so today we are going to dig in uh to deeper into Genesis 18. We're look, looking at verses 10 through 14. This is kind of a long chunk, but there's a question posed at the end that I want to pose for you now so you can be thinking about it as we're reading these verses. And I do encourage you also to jot these verses down and go back and read them on your own so that you can also just dig in for yourself and ask the Lord what he has for you. But let's read this together. Genesis 18, 10 through 14 say, One of them said, and you'll remember that this is where at our Abraham is sitting outside of his tent where three men showed up. There's some versions um, or commentaries that say that the three people that showed up were, were God and the person and, and two angels. Um, I kind of wonder and, and like to think about and explore if it's really the God in three persons that, that the triune God showed up there. Um, and I don't think we have any concrete evidence because we're none of us were there. Um, but anyway, so Abraham is sitting there with these men, the three men, and one of them said to him, I will certainly return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. And Sarah in the tent, which was behind him, um, <laughs> she laughed. Now Abraham and Sarah were advanced 
both adv very advanced in age, and Sarah was well past childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am so old, and my Lord is old, also shall I have pleasure. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Sure surely shall I bear a child when I am old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? So one of the men said to Abraham, This time next year I'm gonna return to you and Sarah will conceive, she will have a son. And uh, and then Sarah, overhearing this conversation, laughs, right? She's, are you kidding me? Like, here I am now, 90 years old, uh, well advanced, well beyond my years. Abraham is 100. Is this even possible that I can have this baby? This is just crazy, right? And I think about, I if I were her th thinking about just all of the logistics, <laughs> all of the... the having a baby at the age of 90 i mean having a baby is so much work and it's so exhausting for a, a 20 or 30 or 40 year old i can't imagine what it would be like for a 90 year old to have that but here's the other there's just blessings along the way too that you you have to recognize and understand that also god was keeping abraham and sarah in good health he was keeping them in you know a physical condition that would um, allow them to be able to, to handle this kind of birth as well. And there's just so many other blessings that I think we can quickly overlook and not even pay attention to that would, you know, that will set Sarah and Abraham up for this. But it is indeed also one of those blessings over their life um, that laughter would be a, a sure response because it just again just seems so crazy that this would happen but also it's it's a blessing that god is the only one who could receive the credit for that god is the only one who could receive credit i often wonder you know why he waited until they were you know until 25 years past the time when they first received the promise but the more I think about it, the more I pray about it, the more I dig in and read about it, it's because there is no doubt that it had to be God. That it wasn't Abraham and, and his his orchestrating. It wasn't Sarah and her orchestrating. It wasn't Abraham. The, the nations didn't come because of Abraham and, and his um, ability to have, have children or Sarah's ability to have children or from their ability to to um, set up and create for themselves a, a new um, a new nation, right? That they they couldn't grow things and cultivate, and it wasn't their business prowess or their ability to to plant and to harvest and to to sow and reap. It wasn't their ability at all. It had nothing to do with them, other than their desire and heart to surrender and and be obedient to what God was asking them to do. When he asked them to leave home, um, all of those years before that, he asked them to set out on their own to go to the land, which I will show you. Abraham chose to trust God. Abraham chose to trust God in that. And so this whole 25 years, they have been in the process of being pruned and sharpened and um, God showing up in their life so that um, they could be prepared and ready for such a time as this when God would choose to bring about the baby that was promised to them all of those years ago. I believe that if I were Sarah, I, I would have laughed too if I overheard this conversation between God and Abraham um, because it does. It just seems so far-fetched, right? Um, but God continues to be faithful and God will take us to the places where we cannot doubt that it is him that is making a way where there seems to be no way. He is making a way where there seems to be no way. And I love, absolutely love how he asks this question and he says, why did Sarah laugh and say, I surely will bear a child when I am old? Why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too difficult for the Lord?
Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? I find myself um, thinking about this verse a lot over the last year. Because you know, when you're faced with situations in your life, and I, I, I wonder what you're walking through right now, and if you're facing this situation similar to, you know, not, maybe not having a baby at age 90, but if you're facing something that just seems too big, it seems like the only way that you're going to walk through this or, or make it through this is through the mighty hand of God, then I believe that you are in a good place. You are in a good place because that is where you will be able to enter into a deeper relationship with God. That you can actually walk through it and step back and, and give all of the glory to, to God and none of the glory to yourself. Because the, like I said with Abraham, the only thing that we're responsible for is to show up and to, to be obedient to what God is asking us to do. So if you're walking through a season in your life like that where the what your God is asking you to walk through or the situation or circumstance in front of you is just too big for you to handle on your own. Consider yourself blessed and favored because God is going to do something miraculous in your life. He's going to work out something in you to, that will draw you closer to him. Even when it seems too big, even when it seems impossible, even when you don't get the answers that you're looking for and the results that you want, God will still show himself faithful to you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I come to you this, this morning and um, I join together with my brothers and sisters, Lord, and I lift up these verses to you, Lord. I lift up your word and I ask, Lord, what it is that you want to teach us about these verses. I pray that you will speak individually to the hearts of those who are listening right now in this moment, but also those who will listen in, in the days and months and years to come, Lord. God, I pray that you will speak life into their hearts, Lord, and that you will remind them that no matter how big the mountain is in front of them, that you are bigger still. And no matter how um, crazy this dream that you have planted on their hearts or the promise that you have spoken over them, Lord, that our doubt is not going to keep you from moving forward. All we need to do is just show up and be obedient. I pray that you will equip us, that you will prune us, that you will make us ready for the promise that you have for us, Father. And Lord, I also just pray that we are able to ask ourselves this question and ask this of you, is anything too difficult for you? And Father, when those moments come to pass, when those miracles happen, Lord, I pray that we are surrendered enough to give all of the glory back to you in private and in public, Lord. May all of the glory be given to you and to your name alone because it is only by your hand that we are blessed and that we are able to, to, um, to move forward, that we're able to advance, we're able to prosper, we're able to be promoted, that we're able to... Um, have promises fulfilled in our lives. I thank you, God, for all of this. And may you be blessed right now, Lord, for this for this very moment, that this is even possible, that we can speak about you and your goodness. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And may your name be known today. In Jesus' name, I pray all of this. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me. And... Um, I pray that you have a great uh, December 30th. Tomorrow we will be back together on December 31st, the last day. I'm just excited and thrilled to, to be with you as we close out 2020, 2020 and prepare for 2021. Be blessed and have a great day. Bye-bye.